Hello again, third intermediate students. Welcome back. We have another lesson from Upstream 3 titled Good and Bad News. It's a 3C on page 34 from the first semester. Now, at the end of this lesson, the student will be able to use present perfect tense in sentences, use present perfect continuous tense in sentences, and then write a letter to a pen friend about an event he or she has taken part in. We will head off with the present perfect simple tense. Now, read the sentences below, then classify them under the right heading. Are these good news or bad news? You have two minutes to do so. Let's check our answers together. The ozone layer has started to heal. This is definitely good news. Any waste paper you threw away six months ago has only just broken down. It's bad news to know that it takes more than six months for waste paper to break down. Some 2,000 species of Pacific Island birds have become extinct. Average temperatures have risen between 0.3 Celsius and 0.7 Celsius. Now for good news, access to clean water for people in the third world has increased to 80% since the 1970s. Bald eagle populations have increased in the last 15 years. And to finish with the bad news, up to now, we have destroyed more than 20% of the Amazon rainforest. First, read these examples and try to find out the grammatical rule. You have one minute to read these examples.
now. All these sentences are in the present perfect simple tense. Can you notice what are the changes on these verbs? We'll examine more examples to find out the grammatical rule together. Now, here we have, this is the grammatical rule of the present perfect simple tense. We start off with a subject. We have he or she or it. These are singular subjects. We have I or they or we or you. Now, depending on the subject, you write has or have. So he or she or it takes has, I, they, we, you take have. Then you write the verb in the past participle tense. So the first example here, we have he, this is the singular subject, has, since we have the subject he, washed, this is the past participle tense of the verb wash, and then you finish your sentence. Now that we've established the structure of the rule, we'll see why or when we use it. Now, we have number one, it's used for an action that happened at an unstated time in the past. The emphasis here is on the action, so when it occurred is unimportant or unknown. We have the example here, she has cleaned her room. So she is the subject here, and we have has cleaned, this is the action, and we have her room, so we know that it happened in the past. The emphasis here is on the cleaning action, but we do not know when it happened. Now, the second use of this tense is for actions which started in the past but continues to the present, especially with stative verbs such as be, have, like, know, and etc. So we have the example here, he has been here for two hours. So he is the subject. We have has been, this is the present perfect simple tense, and we know that he's been, been here for two hours. So he was here, it started in the past, and he is still here. Then we have the third use for a recent completed action. When I say I have already read the book, I did that in the past, but only recently, so it's not a long time ago. Last one we have personal experiences or changes. So when I say it has become hot these days, this is how I experience the situation. I feel that it's hot these days, so I use the present perfect simple tense. Now again, we have time expressions that we use with this tense. For example, already. Already is used in statements and in questions. So when I say I have already spoken to Ali, it means I did that prior to our conversation now, and this is a statement. And when I say, have you finished eating already? I'm asking a question. Have you finished eating already? <clears throat> we use yet with the present perfect in questions and negations. So when I say, has Mary paid the bill yet? I'm asking, did she do the action before I'm talking or asking now? And when I say, they haven't come yet, this is negation. Other time expressions. We can use always, just, ever, never, so, far, today, this week, this month, this year, etc. How long, lately, recently, and still in negations. For example, we have never been to France. It means up until the time I'm speaking, I've never been to, pr to France. I never went. I have recently bought a CD player. So only recently I have bought a CD player. Now we've established uh, the present perfect tense, its uses, and time expressions that we use with it. I think we're ready to start with task number one. So here are sentences, read them, and rewrite them with the correct verb in the next column. So write them in the correct form in this column. You have three minutes to do that.
Now let's check our answers together. I have just finished the movie. I have the subject I, so I write have. Just is my time expression here, and finished, which is the past participle of the verb finish. My grandmother has been to England. So you put the verb be in the past participle tense. I have already seen Peter. You need to put the verb in the past participle tense. They have talked to Ahmed twice this week. We have the subject they, so it's plural. You put have instead of has, and the verb in the past participle tense. My cats have drunk a lot of milk so far. My cats, it's a plural, so I write have, and the verb in the past participle tense, drunk. And lastly, we have never adopted an animal. So the past participle tense of the verb adopt is adopted. Good job. Let's go to task number two. Okay. Now that we've reviewed examples, I think you're ready to write sentences on your own. So write full sentences for each of the subjects or pronouns here given below using the correct present perfect simple tense. Then we're going to check the suggested answers. You have three minutes to do so. Now let's check our answers together. He has visited his friends. She has traveled a lot recently. It has just slept. I have already had my lunch. They have washed their car. We have spoken to them. You have written 10 pages so far. Good job. 
Now, we're done with the present perfect simple tense. Let's check the present perfect continuous tense. Now, these are sentences. Take your time to read them carefully. Okay. Now, all these sentences are in the present perfect continuous tense. Can you notice the changes on the verbs in these sentences? Let's review the rule together. We're going to look at more examples to find out the grammatical rule. Now, in the present perfect continuous tense, we must start with a subject. So here we have he or she or it, I or they or we or you. Depending on the subject, you write has or have. If it's singular, you write has. If it's one of these, you write have. Then you write been. And after that, you add the verb with the suffix ing. So let's take examples to check the rule more and see when or why you, we use it for. So the emphasis here is on the duration of the action which started in the past and continues up to the present. So to talk about actions that started in the past but continues to, up to the present, we use the present perfect continuous tense. For example, she has been cleaning all day. So it started in the past, it may still be going on, and the emphasis here is on the duration of the action. So she's been cleaning all day. Second usage for an action which is which has started in the past and lasted for some time. It may still be continuing or have just finished, but it has left a result still visible in the present. For example, they're tired because they have been traveling a lot lately. They may still be traveling or have just ended traveling, but they're still tired. So this is visible effect. Then we use it for, to express anger, irritation, or annoyance. So it has been following me since this morning. Say it's a cat has been following me since this morning. I'm expressing irritation or annoyance. So I use the present perfect continuous tense. And we use it for repeated actions in the past continuing to the present. So when we say he has lost weight because he has been going to the gym every day. So he started at some point in the past and he's been going every day up until now. Now for the time expressions we use with the present perfect continuous tense, we have since and for. We use since to talk about the starting point in the past of this action. So when I say I haven't seen Ali since we left home. So I haven't seen him since we left home. That was the starting point. I have been working since seven o'clock. So these are the starting point of our action. And when I say she has been, we use for, for over a period of time. So I'm talking about the duration of this action. So she has been a teacher for a year. I don't know the starting point here, but I know the duration, which is a year. And when I say, I have been working on the essay for days, I don't know exactly, I'm not telling exactly which days, but I'm saying the duration was days. Okay, now we've established the rule and the usage and time expressions. Now that we've reviewed the rule, the usage and time expressions, we are ready for task number three. You're going to rearrange the words to form sentences. Now here is an example. I'm going to rearrange these words to form a correct sentence. You have been talking a lot. I start with the subject you. Since it's you, I'm going to write have, add been, then write the verb adding the suffix I and G. So you have three minutes to do the same with these four examples.
Now, let's check our answers together. I have been studying since 9 o'clock. I have the subject. Depending on the subject, I put have. Of course, you're going to write been. The verb with the ing. This is my time expression, and this is my starting point, 9 o'clock. Then we have, they have been playing football for two hours. He has been painting his house recently. She has been learning English for three years. Now, we're done with task number three. We'll go to task number four. You've read sentences and you've seen them in the correct form. You are now ready to write sentences on your own using the present perfect continuous tense. Use the pronouns or subjects here to do that. You have three minutes to complete your task. Now that we're done, let's check our answers together. Here are some suggested answers. He has been running in the park. She has been studying for her test since Monday. It has been flying for an hour. I have been living in the city since I was seven. They have been playing the piano all day. We have been watching TV and you have been wearing this jacket for a while. Good job. Now, let's check our reading activity. And this is task number five. We have a text here. We're going to read it, then answer questions about it. Now, the text starts with a greeting, dear Menar, and ends with yours, Nora. Do you know what type of text it is? 
It says, Dear Manar, Hi, how are you? I know you do a lot to help the environment, so I'm writing to tell you about the plant a tree special day we have recently had at our neighborhood. Each family has bought a small pine tree. Since then, we have been planting the trees on our front yards, the parks, and along the streets. I've been so excited, I can't wait for them to grow. Have you ever tried planting a tree before? It has been amazing. What else can we do to help the environment? You must write back soon and tell me all you know. Yours, Nora. Now, scan the text again and answer these five questions. You have seven minutes to do that.
Now, let's check our answers together. Now, you know that we've established this is a letter, an informal letter. So what has the event, when has the event taken place? It has recently taken place. Where has the event taken place? It has taken place at their neighborhood, so at Noura's neighborhood. What have they done? Each family has bought a small pine tree. Since then, they have been planting the trees on their front yards, the parks, and along the streets. How has it felt? It has been amazing. Who has written this letter? Noura has written this letter. Now, we've read a letter to a pen friend talking about an event. It's your turn now to write a letter to a pen friend. Okay, which leads us to task number six. You are going to write a letter. You have recently taken part in a special plant a tree day. Write a letter within 100 to 120 words to your English pen friend, telling him or her all about it. You're going to write about when and where the event has taken place, what you have done in this event, how it has felt, and you're going to ask if he or she has taken part in a similar event. Now, this is your task. You are going to write about it. You have 10 minutes to finish your writing task.
Now that you're done, assess your work. Put a tick if you followed the criteria. You must write about all the points mentioned above. You must use the correct tense. You must spell correctly, punctuate well, meaning use full stops, commas, and etc. And then you have to use capitalization whenever is needed. Now here is a suggested answer. Dear Hassan, hi, how are you? I know you do a lot to help the environment, so I'm writing to tell you about the plant a tree special day we have recently had at our afternoon activity center. Each member has bought a small pine tree. Since then, we have been planting the trees on the activity center grounds, the gardens, and along the streets. I've been so excited. I can't wait for them to grow. Have you ever taken part in something like this before? It has been astonishing. What else can we do to help the environment? You must write back soon and tell me all you know. Yours, Jawad. Now, Thank you and good luck.